Okay, so I wanted to talk through the cycle of change. And for those of you who don't know anything about it, Prochaska and DiClemente were two researchers in the States. And years ago, early 80s, they studied people who were smoking and they noticed the changes that they went through when they made a change in their smoking. And I'm going to try and draw this now on the flip chart and give it my best shot of, of their findings from years ago. So they said that initially people would be in pre-contemplation. Pre-contemplation, if we just think about smoking, pre-contemplation would be where you're smoking and you're not thinking about changing it. You're not intending to change it. You might feel um, quite defensive about it. You might feel that you don't want to think about it. You might be enjoying it, but you're certainly not in a place where you're considering changing it. And other people around you might notice your smoking and might be concerned about your smoking, but it's not something that you're thinking of changing. And there's often a, a trigger that leads people to contemplation. Now, as these long words suggest, you go from before you plan to change it to thinking about changing it. And when we start to think about change, we often feel ambivalent. And ambivalent is just a posh word for mixed feelings. So, if you've been smoking for a long time, and you haven't really been planning to change it, and something gets you to think about that, so maybe there's a trigger, maybe cigarettes go up in price, you start to think about your smoking, you start to think about changing your smoking, you're likely to have mixed feelings about it because you get something from the smoking, but you also don't want to spend the increased money. You might start to think about preparing to change it, but that might make you feel quite stuck and like you don't want to do anything about it. Now there was a, a psychotherapist, I think his name was Alfred Benjamin, and he tells a story of walking around an area that he wasn't familiar with one evening, and he asked somebody for directions, and they gave him the directions that he needed to get to the house he was going to. Once he'd received the directions, he turned around and started walking. The person who had helped him shouted after him and said, you're not walking the right way. And he said, I know. I now know which way to go, but I'm not ready to go there yet. And Prochaska and Di Clemente would say, that's a really good description of contemplation. You know that you might change it, but you're not prepared. Preparation would be the next stage. So in contemplation, somebody isn't changing, but they're thinking of changing really in the next six months. Preparation would be where you are intending to change in the next month. So kind of 30 days will be where you are looking to move. But this time can be full of doubt. So you might be concerned, you might be worried that when you change, you're going to lose something. If you give up smoking, what would you do when you're feeling stressed? What would you do when you're driving your car? So the preparation stage is really critical that we kind of really put things in place and really consider how we're going to move forward so that we're ready to go into action. Action is where you make the change. So maybe you get rid of all the cigarettes in your house and in your car and you stop smoking. And action actually takes six months. So the months are kind of interesting. Pre-contemplation, you're really not thinking about changing in the next six months. Contemplation, this is where you are intending to change in the next six months. Preparation is kind of a month away that you're going to move into action. Action takes six months while you get used to not smoking. And there's often a lot of ambivalence that follows around this cycle. And you move into maintenance. 
maintenance is six months plus. This is where you don't smoke anymore and you might still want to smoke. So you might want to relapse. Now, Prachasana and Tukamete talk about recycling and kind of going around. You might think of it as lapsing, relapsing, recycling, but you're kind of coming back to not being ready to change or being ready to change again in six months. And of course, you can leave the cycle here. And leaving means you haven't smoked for a long time and you have no temptation to go back. So there's no risk of relapse because you have fully stopped and you're fully out of temptation. But what tends to happen all the way around this cycle is this ambivalence. So contemplation, I like smoking, but I'm worried it's costing money. Preparation, I'd like to change, but can I manage it? Action, I'm gonna stop smoking. Oh, this is kind of scary, this is tough. What if I fail? Maintenance, oh, I'm still tempted to kind of go back to the old behavior, but I really want to keep going with the new behavior. Relapse can feel dreadful. So a sense of failure and shame, but maybe a bit of relief and going back to something that's familiar. And when they looked at people who were smoking, what Prochaska and Ticamente found many years ago was people would go around and around and around recycling until they reached termination and exit and they left and they didn't want to smoke anymore. That's the original model of the cycle of change. And what I'd like to do next is show you how I would use it in my own language if I was working with somebody. Potassium yeah. and Ducamente carried out their original research into people who were smoking. And they then joined uh, John Norcross and they wrote Changing for Good. And this book goes into much more detail looking at the six stages of making changes. Now, more recently, Prochaska has worked with his wife, Janice, on changing to thrive. And I would really recommend this book to any practitioner, but also to anybody who would like to change what they see as the top five health issues in our country. Namely, smoking, drinking too much alcohol, eating unhealthily, not taking enough exercise, and getting too stressed, which they would call distress. They apply the cycle of change with progress steps all the way through to help us to make changes. Now, if I was going to use the cycle of change as I talked through earlier with a client, I would change the original language. I think words like contemplation are just a bit jargony. So what I want to do now is show you um, uh, how I would use the model with a client who is drinking too much that you might think about how you might use this model on yourself maybe with one of those unhealthy habits that I've mentioned or how you might use it in practice um, with a service user or with a family. Can you tell me a little bit about what you're drinking at the moment? What's your drinking like in a typical week? Um, I'd say during the week days I'm probably not really drinking anything. Okay. Um, but it'll turn into more binge drinking when it gets to the weekend. So, so you said Friday, Saturday, Sunday, okay. sort of stuff. And when you say binge drinking, how would you describe that? Um, just like a couple of cases a weekend, probably. Maybe one on a Friday, one on a Saturday. Okay. So a case of beer on a Friday, a case of beer on a Saturday. Yeah. Um, and you use the word binge drinking, so I imagine you're familiar with the idea that more than five drinks in one sitting would be considered a binge, yeah. so that would be a really good description. Uh, but in the week you don't drink at all? No. Okay. Would it be okay with you if I show you a model of change, just so that you can see how it fits with your experience? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna write this down on the paper. So typically, when people are doing behaviours that are unhealthy, such as binge binge drinking, they start by not thinking about it. So I would call this before you think about it. It might be that you're aware, you've used the word binge drinking, it might be that the person is aware that maybe they're drinking to an unhealthy level, but they're certainly not planning to change it. 
There's often a trigger, so that might be, I don't know, they end up going to hospital through drinking, and that leads them to think about it. So this would be thinking about it. I'm just going to draw, draw and talk as I go through, okay? So when somebody starts to think about their binge drinking, they can feel, I don't know, they might feel, I really need to do something about this, but they might think, well, I really love it, so I don't want to do anything about it. And I would call that kind of confusion or ambivalence. Now, they might decide that they are going to think about change and they might start to prepare for change. So they might think about, well, what do I need to do to change the binge drinking? Do I want to change every night that I binge drink or do I want to reduce or stop the number of nights? And they might take a little while of making that decision and then they move into action. And that action, somebody reduces or stops their drinking. And they can feel really good about that, especially if they've spent a long time thinking about it and deliberating mm. over it. But actually, they can really miss it, and they're not quite sure then what to do <clears throat> at the weekend. Um, if they keep their new idea going, so I'd call this keeping it going, let's say six months or more, they might still have mixed feelings. So they might think, oh, I, feel, I feel like I really miss it. And so they might go back. Now, they might just go back for one crazy weekend and then come back into keeping it going. But what happens a lot of the time when people try and change is they fully go back to how they used to be. And that can feel really rubbish. But it can feel a bit of a relief because they go back to something they used to enjoy. And people will often kind of, they would call it recycling or relapsing and going around and around this cycle before they leave. But some people will leave the first time. So... They're binge drinking, not thinking about it. Something makes them think about it. They consider it. They prepare for change. They make the change. They keep it going and they don't go back. They don't go back to that binge drinking. They exit the model. Now, when you hear that model, when you hear me describe it, if you had to say exactly where you think you are on that model right now, where would you put yourself, honestly? Probably... <clears throat> before you think about it. So, to, yeah? Yeah. So at this, at this point in time, you're drinking, you're binge drinking, and you're not planning to change it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Andrew.